Thank you for joining us for this month's Virtual Curators Tour. I'm Jenna Gilley, Associate Curator of Exhibitions at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art, and I'll be your guide today. We will be looking at the exhibition, Breathing Life into History, Contemporary Native American Art from the Collection, curated by Lauren Wolfer. Pulling from traditions passed down from generation to generation, contemporary Native American artists, especially in the last quarter century, have produced an impressive body of work in diverse media. Unique in their dual identity, living in the present day, but integrating ancient cultural and spiritual ideas, the featured artists' abilities to either weave their heritage into contemporary context through medium and imagery, or continue using traditional methods in a modern world, speaks to their self-expression. Influences seen throughout the works include textiles, nature, rituals and storytelling, and identity and politics. Indigenous artists have and continue to create with their cultural knowledge, reinterpret tradition, and engage with current topics. Examples of artists in this exhibition include mixed media artist Jeffrey Gibson, master printmaker John Quick to see Smith, glass sculptor Tony Hohola, and ceramicist Maria Martinez. This exhibition is broken down into six themes, nature, tricksters, textiles, medium, ritual and everyday life, and politics. Today we'll be looking at one object from each category with textiles and medium combined to learn how each plays a role in contemporary native art. First we have nature, represented by this piece by Navajo artist Emmy Whitehorse. The curator states, from the wildlife and rivers providing nourishment and hydration to the earth used for making ceramic ware, nature and land are fundamental to Native American identity. There is a strong spiritual connection and respect for the sense of place expressed in many works, along with an acceptance of responsibility to nurture and restore it in light of environmental issues. Some artists explore this quite literally while others, such as Emmy Whitehorse, explore its potential for emotional evocation and response. In this untitled work, Whitehorse displays her typical affinity for a brightly colored ground filled with sensitive scrawling marks. Whitehorse's unique diffused backgrounds are achieved by smearing, caressing, and fine-tuning dry washes into the paper using her hands. The warm color palette, arch shapes, and small, seemingly far away points reference the long vistas of Navajo landscape. The scrawls could be viewed as geographic formations, sparse patches of vegetation, or moving wildlife tracks. Their diminutive size calls attention to the vast space in which they are situated. In addition, these works are vaguely biological and cellular in nature. The artist states that this is intentional as her works tell the story of knowing land over time, of being completely microcosmically within a place. Therefore, viewers can choose, as we adjust our eyesight, our depth of field, to White Horse's intricate ciphers, to read these signs of nature as either very near, as if viewing through a microscope, or very far away, the vista perspective. Either way, the tangles of marks amount to a secret code which draws the viewer into the work's slow, meditative experience. In a similar but distinctly more narrative vein from nature, we have the theme of the trickster in Native American art. The trickster is a regular trope in Native American tales which serves as an aid in teaching valuable life lessons. Common tricksters include coyote, raven, and rabbit, each associated with a tribal region. Dwayne Slick's art uses the coyote as a main source of inspiration. Gathering stories about his Meskwaki and Ho-Chunk roots from his parents, Slick's work combines a modernist art approach with the central figure of Coyote to create subtly political works. Here in a piece from the portfolio, Memories of Childhood, Grandpa Fire, a Coyote figure dances beneath a single star in grayscale on a blank cream ground. The star in question is actually a copy of an Indian star quilt pattern. There are several Native American stories that combine the coyote trickster with stars. In one Navajo telling, Coyote is impatient and spills a jar full of stars, creating the scattered nature of the night sky. In another Cheyenne story, Coyote learns a lesson on the dangers of being conceited when he believes he can dance among the stars. In both tales, Coyote is a symbol for mischief and foolishness, yet the audience often feels sorry for it. 
Slick's flat and awkward rendering of Coyote also conveys this idea. Through his position under the star on the paper, he could be considered to be dancing, yet the splayed nature of the pose is also reminiscent of a body outline in a crime scene. Like the wolf, the buffalo, and the grizzly bear, the coyote was hunted down and killed by European settlers because of the fear for the safety of their livestock. The violence towards these animals could be said to parallel the genocide waged against Native Americans in the United States. As stated by Richard Klein, exhibition director at the Aldridge Contemporary Art Museum, the coyote doesn't just embody Native America, it is Native America, with the animal's roots on the continent going back into the early Pleistocene epoch, two and a half million years ago. Slick has taken on the mantle of the coyote to convey both the beauty and the tragedy of his heritage. In the artist's work, there is room for the coyote's laughter and its tears. Our next work explores the themes of textiles. Craft, particularly weaving, has a long history in Native American life and tradition. Whether used for blankets or baskets, it is a highly respected skill mastered and passed down over generations. Complex patterns require a highly skilled weaver and can represent motifs, like weather and rituals, often acting as identifiers for the tribe who wove it. In addition, oranges, reds, deep browns, and blues are dyes created from natural sources, tying back to the importance of nature and land. Native artists such as Tony Hohola have expanded on this traditional craft in the contemporary medium of glass. Here in blown glass pot, the abstract, geometric patterns applied to the vessel's surface mimic traditional Pueblo weaving designs. The first weavers in the American Southwest were the ancestors of the Pueblo Indians, traditionally known as the Ancient Ones, or the Anasazi. These patterns were later adopted by the Navajo, who developed a complex visual weaving language. For example, zigzag lines represent lightning, a powerful spiritual force. Diamond and triangle shapes are symbolic of the sacred mountains of the Southwest. Even the colors chosen by the artist, red, white, tan, and black, are traditional dyeing colors. Hohola was one of the first artists to learn the trade of glass at Pilchuck Glass School in Seattle, Washington under Dale Chihuly, whose now famous works draw much inspiration from native design. Like many other native glassmakers, Hohola appreciates the fact that glass is created from a natural material, sand, while having both ancient and modern roots. The medium serves as a perfect bridge for native art traditions, which continue to be produced today in innovative ways. Many other artists are also focusing on reframing our thoughts on native traditions and culture. Wendy Redstar depicts images of life on the reservation, like the houses and cars, that are a common sight but with a campy twist. In the HUD, she stacks reservation houses on top of one another, making them grander than they would be individually. Looking closer, everyday aspects and personality are defined through objects like the bike sitting out front and Christmas lights trickling from the greenhouse's roof. These items might appear strangely common for many, as contemporary culture has often defined Native Americans as exotic or other beings. As noted by the curator, fetishism, as it is used in the context of art and cultural objects, is a term adopted by some artists critical of the tendency for cultural stereotypes to become commodified for profit. These ideas are collected by a broader populace who become attached to, and nostalgic for, such stereotypical representations. Think of Native American football mascots, or statues of Native American chiefs outside of smoke shops. Such practices have skewed our perception of what normal everyday Native life is, when in fact it is much like our own. By naming this piece the HUD, Red Star references the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development, also known by the acronym HUD. This title acknowledges the poverty that faces many Native communities, and also the irony of Native life, as the land that was once theirs is now provided to them through the U.S. government. The final piece we'll be discussing today is centered on the theme of politics. John Quick to C. Smith's Ceci n'est pas une peace pipe is a riff on the Trump Loy painting, The Treachery of Images, by surrealist artist Rene Magritte. In Smith's work, Magritte's famous pipe and quote have been altered slightly. Smoke rises from the pipe, 
forming an image reminiscent of General Custer, who led gruesome attacks on the Cheyenne and Lakota tribes during the Indian Wars of the mid-19th century. A Native American chief has been rendered at the bottom of the picture. The thought bubbles that rise from his head enclose the pipe and the quote, se sine pa un peace pipe. The word peace has been inserted into Magritte's original phrase, se sine pa un pipe, French for, this is not a pipe. Combined, Smith's imagery and wordplay comments on the deceptive nature of American settlers, who were originally aided and offered peace by the native people. As the quest for westward expansion and the idea of manifest destiny increased, the U.S. government began to use more forceful tactics on Native Americans, beginning a narrative of forced assimilation and stereotyping, which would continue for the following century. Many contemporary artists like Smith are upending dominant cultural narratives of Native American life, both past and present, with their contemporary perspectives. Thank you for joining me on this virtual curator's tour. To see many more fascinating works, each with their own unique tales, I encourage you to see Breathing Life into History, Contemporary Native American Art from the Collection, in person before it closes on January 22, 2023.